What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the 2024 Volkswagen Tiguan SE. So this is the last gasp here on this generation of the Tiguan. As of the time of shooting this video, Volkswagen has not unveiled the 2025 Tiguan yet, but we're expecting big changes. And by big changes, I mean it's gonna be in line with what we see now on the 2024 Atlas and Cross Sports and things like the GTI, the ID4, etc. So if you love this body style, go out and grab a 2024 because this is your last chance. So again, this is an SE trim, so it's not spec'd out or anything like that, but let's go ahead and start up front and walk through everything we have on this model. So starting up front, we have a full switch suite of automatic LED headlights. So we got LED daytime running lights, your standard LED lights, LED high beams, as well as LED tail lights in the back. The front grille is very traditional, simple Volkswagen grille. You have these chrome inserts here. It's pretty compact overall. We've seen you know, a lot of these SUVs have these massive front grills, not on the TIG one here. It's pretty small, at least on the part with the badging. Then there's a body colored splitter and then some like gray plastic basically around the parking sensors and the air intakes down here. Now under the hood, you have a standard 2.0 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine, 184 horsepower, 221 pound feet of torque, 30 miles per gallon highway, 23 miles per gallon city. All of it rides on these dark graphite painted aluminum alloy wheels. They're 18 inch and they have a tiny little bit of cladding here around the wheel wells as well. Not a lot, but just a little touch there with some reflectors. Right here, you got a little chrome accent. Your little R-Line badge would be here if we were looking at that model. But again, this is just the SE, not even the SE R-Line. Chrome trim around the windows. You've got manual folding mirrors here. These have integrated turn signals, blind spot monitoring, but again, they're manual folding and they are heated. Keyless access here on the door panels. And then up top, you do have silver roof rails and a full panoramic sunroof. All right, so moving to the back of the Tiguan here, like I mentioned, you do have these LED tail lights here. Nice intricate design. They're not sculpted really necessarily. A little bit of a 3D element to them, but pretty simplistic, but I still think they look pretty good. You have a massive back windshield here with tinted rear glass, rear wiper, a little bit of a spoiler here, brake light up top. Your new Volkswagen badging there in the center. Tig one word mark, standard rear camera. You got a little sprayer on it as well to get that thing cleaned off. You do have a power lift gate here on the SE, which is super nice to have. And then this is actually a three row model. So you can see you've got your little tiny back row here, but you can very easily put these down with this little lever here. You've got all your cargo bits here. You've got your monster mats back here, which are an added option. You've got levers here to drop your second row seats as well. You also have a full size spare tire back here and all your tools. And again, I'll have all numbers on screen for cargo space with the third row seats up, third row seats down, and the second row seats down. Also do have spot for a cargo shade, hooks for cargo nets, all kinds of nice storage options back here. It is a great option for families. There's plenty of cargo space back here, but let's go ahead and jump inside the cabin. All right, so hopping inside the cabin here, we've got a couple different features that stand out. One in not so good of a way, we'll get to that. But let's just start up here. You have a really, really nice leather wrapped steering wheel, accent stitching, nice textured horn here. Silver Volkswagen badge right here. Controls for your adaptive cruise control here on the left side, and it has travel assist. We'll get to that in the test drive portion. And then you have controls for your digital display here. As far as cabin materials go, very minimal. I mean, this is a pretty affordable SUV at about $34,000. So you're gonna have very minimal cabin materials for the most part. Most of it is basically plastic hard black plastic almost everywhere. You have some little contrasty bits here, like on the door panel, so you got some faux carbon fiber, a little bit of chrome, a little bit of a leather material with some accent stitching on the door panels, but a lot of plastic and a lot of it feels not poorly made. There's not a lot of creaking or anything like that, but it just feels cheap a little bit. It's mainly made for families, first time drivers, things like that. It's a small SUV. You got controls for your heated mirrors right here, lighting controls on the left side, some vents, light wiper controls, it's all pretty basic, it's standard. But past that, you have something I'm not the biggest fan of, and that is the Volkswagen Digital Cockpit Non-Pro. So as you guys remember, they split the digital cockpit into two different versions. There's a pro version and a non-pro version. This is the non-pro version. The graphics package is, in my opinion, it's kind of chintzy, kind of cheap looking. It's not my favorite. So if you have the means to do so, I would recommend stepping up and getting the pro version of the digital cockpit. It just looks so much nicer. Hopefully this kind of goes away when we have the redesigned infotainment graphics package that I looked at on the Atlas. If you want to check that out, click the video link up above or down in the description. I'm hoping that that transitions over here to the Tiguan because that would be a welcome change from my perspective. Up top, you do have a little place to, you know, put your phone, I guess. Yeah, 
fits my phone pretty nicely. So that's a nice touch. Two vents here. Moving down from that, you have an eight inch digital cockpit and an eight inch infotainment display. This is Volkswagen's last gen infotainment system. So it's not their most updated one that has the bright graphics that you know, we've talked about in previous videos. This is just the last gen one that has kind of the more muted look to it. Uh, it's not bad by any means. It still works really, really well. And some people might prefer it. I actually like the newer one better, which is pretty surprising because I've complained a lot about it because it doesn't work very well, but it does work pretty well now. But this has everything, radio, Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, you know, you've got your assist systems, you have vehicle settings, you have a rear view camera, you can look at your parking sensors, all kinds of good stuff like that. Hey, and it even has the little swipe feature. That's so gimmicky. Moving on down from that, you do have a Climatronic dual zone climate control system. You do have some touch capacitive buttons that are more common on the newer models for Volkswagen. Wagon, but here you just have them on the climate control system so you can slide to turn your fan speed up and down slide to adjust temperature and then you can tap to turn on your heated seats or your defoggers or anything like that down from that you have two USB-C ports a 12 volt outlet and a Qi enabled wireless charging pad push to start engine button you've got your gear shift here for your eight speed automatic transmission with tiptronic and sport mode a little bit of a leather accent with some stitching auto start stop engine disable button and your electronic parking brake pretty minimal on the buttons you have here since this is a lower trim level. Two cup holders, little tiny center console armrest, no ports or lights or anything in it, it's pretty minimal. And then you do have a decent sized glove box here that also has storage for some SD cards. I don't know why they haven't gotten rid of that yet. They don't use it anymore. I guess if you had navigation, you'd need it. Here on lower trim levels, it's just basically a place to hold SD cards, which actually is pretty nice if you are a creative. So up here, you have just a standard rear view mirror, nothing too fancy about it. I think it does have a compass and it's auto dimming, so that's nice. LED dome lights up here. You've got your panoramic sunroof controls there as well. You can slide the shade back or slide the first panel back if you want some extra air in the cabin. So some of the things that are really nice that are standard now across the board on these Tiguan's is Volkswagen's IQ drive system. So this just gives you a ton of really nice safety features slash semi-autonomous driving features that I love. We hit on travel assist a little bit. We'll do a demo here in just a sec of their semi-automated driving assistance, adapted cruise control with stop and go, lane assist, emergency assist, front assist with forward collision warning and automatic emergency braking and pedestrian monitoring, active side assist, which is just a blind spot monitor, and then a rear traffic alert. As far as seating surfaces go, you have Titan Black VTEX leather seating surfaces here. Nice perforations, they are heated. The passenger seat is just a manually adjustable seat. The driver's seat is a power adjustable seat and it has a lumbar support. All right, so hopping into the back seat here, pretty roomy for the size of the vehicle. I have this driver's seat back as far as I would sit at about 6'1", according to one of the commenters, 6'1 and 5 eighths of an inch, so creepy. Matte pocket back here, you do have another USB-C port, some rear vents, love that. 12 volt outlet here as well. Speakers in the door panels as well. And the door panels mirror pretty nicely what we've got up front, except for the faux carbon fiber, you don't have that back here. Some LED dome lights right there, handles, hooks, all that kind of stuff. Again, that panoramic sunroof comes all the way to the back seat here. In this center console area, you have two cup holders here, make a nice armrest. Two adults back here, no problem. Plus, you have that third row so you can stick the kiddos back there. Now, if you do have the third row seats up, I've got them down currently, so it's a little hard to do, but there is a little lever you can grab here and you can actually tilt the seats back a little bit. So you get a little bit of reclining, again, a little more if those third row seats weren't pushing against my back. All right, let's take the Tiguan here for a test drive. Again, 2.0 liter turbocharged four cylinder, 184 horsepower, 221 pound feet of torque. One thing I've definitely noticed about driving Tiguans in the past is that they've always been real quick due to the size and how light they are. They really do feel light as well. We've got it in sport mode. So once we get out here on the main road, we'll go ahead and give it a little juice. It does take a second as a lot of these smaller, cheaper SUVs do to kind of get going. But once it does, it's pretty powerful. Powerful. It feels quick and responsive. Yeah, like that feels great, honestly. It's really zippy, smooth, fun to drive. That's another thing is that just the overall responsiveness of the Tiguan 
is really, really up there. Even if you're not really a car person, it's super responsive and I think you'll notice it going from just about any other vehicle out there, at least in this price point, of how quick, how snappy, how responsive the steering feels, the braking feels, the acceleration feels. Push to start engine button is nicely located out of the way here. Eight-speed automatic transmission, as I mentioned. Again, infotainment, easy to use. It's not my favorite system. It definitely looks dated at this point. So thankfully we're getting an update next year. These are a little controversial because they're a little bit tougher to use than using standard buttons when you're actually trying to use it while driving. Let's go ahead and turn travel assist on. Travel assist is selected now and let's go ahead and set it and uh, let it do its thing. It's probably gonna yell at me to keep my hand on the wheel here, but this system is just so fun. You can see it kind of slightly turning the wheel to keep me, I mean, pretty freaking dead center. It's almost crazy how much it centers you. Some of these other like lane keeping assist, they just do their best to try to prevent you from hitting the vehicle in the opposite lane. This actually glues you to the center of the lane. It really is impressive. I'm not applying any accelerating or braking power at all or turning the wheel at all. Look at that. You see it taking me around this where it slightly bends here. Let it do its thing down this big hill. Bump the speed up a little bit. This system is just beyond impressive. It's a pretty harsh curve right there. Took it no problem center me back in the lane. Really awesome to have it on something at this price point. And if you guys need compact SUV that's relatively affordable, has some awesome standard, you know, LED lighting features, standard IQ drive assist features, all that kind of stuff. And you want something at this price point and you love this specific body style, this is probably going away after the 2024 model year, definitely check out the 2024 Tiguan. Again, this one's priced at about $34,000 MSRP. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Drop a like on the video if you loved it. Tell me in the comments down below, are you going to pick up a 2024 Tiguan or are you going to wait till the new model comes out in 2025? I'm really excited to take a look at that, especially because it's rumored there might be some electric elements to it. So we'll have to wait and see. Let's have a conversation down in the comments and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be among the first to see every single new video the second I hit publish. We'll see you in the next one.